Welcome back. See off my meds pod. You already know how it is. I'm answering some of your questions today. I got a boatload of follow-up questions for my last video. So I figured I would just answer them. I need another pick of your feet, please. We got the lovely toes here. <laughs> just, I need to stop offering it for free. I just, I, I will, that's the fetish I will never understand is like, I, I will never understand the, the liking to feet. I don't dislike feet. I like feet, but I'm not like, ugh, feet, you know? What inspires you to dance? My inability to sit still. I don't know, it's an ex art form and an expression that I really don't get with any other art form. Like I don't get the, I don't know if I'm gonna say, I don't know. If, I'll just say what I was gonna, what I had on my mind, what came to my heart was that acting doesn't bring me the type of joy that dance does. Dance is very cathartic for me. Dance is, uh, it aligns me, it centers me, It my brain just like feels way more at ease. <laughs> uh, acting's a little bit different for me. And I, I think that's just because I just have to be in a different mindset. And so my focus is, is placed on that, but they both bring me an immense amount of joy. I, I don't want to say it that way, but I think the dance combined with it being a physical activity, it's just therapy for me. I love it. I love just being able to move my body, being comfortable, loving my body, which has been something that I did not really do in the past. Even, even in my dance journey, there was a time where I only wore baggy clothes or what? Oh, cause it probably moved. The mic moved, hold on. How about on the tiddy? See, see, mic issues. Mic check one, two. <sighs> Except I lost my thought. Oh, I used to wear baggy clothes all the time. And like, I never felt comfortable being um, in a small amount of clothing or like in crop tops, you couldn't pay me. It'd make me, I would have probably backed out or quit. The amount of jobs or opportunities I've backed out of because I, I hated my body or I hated what I looked like or I didn't think I was thin enough or pretty enough, but like mainly thin enough because that's always been an issue for reasons I've spoken about before and can speak at another time. But I love that my new journey with dance, my kind of new mindset with all of my passions has been to love myself more. And because I've been healing in all these other areas, especially as it relates to my body image and how I feel about myself, it's made that journey so much more fun. And it's made dance way more enjoyable. What do you do when you feel hopeless? Keep going and don't stop until you get there. The one thing that I've learned as someone with a lot of anxiety who gets panic attacks on the regular, out of the blue, and I'm not saying that to sound dramatic, but like I've really had to hone in on that aspect of my personality and how I react to things. And I've really worked hard on it in the last couple of years. And the one thing that I've learned is that everything is temporary, nothing is permanent, and the way I react to things happening is going to set me up for success down the line. So if I don't overreact to things and I stay grounded and I stay, I stay centered and I meditate or I just do my deep breathing exercises, I normally get past that hump where it starts, to, everything starts to get really heavy and it feels like the walls are caving in and feels like everything's gonna go poorly and your life's, you know, at its end and you're like, everything's gonna suffer, just stop. Focus on something, read a book or something. Definitely do not be on your social media. And I think that's a great start. It's funny because I, I answer these questions. I think each, each one of these questions could be answered in an episode. Maybe we do that. 
How do you get into the mood to motivate yourself? Jumping jacks lately has been helping. I don't know why getting myself up, up and off of the couch if I need to motivate myself and I'm finding myself being in that slump. Binaural beats is great. I like for this podcast to get myself motivated, I listen to a little EDM music. That never hurt nobody. EDM music always helps get me up and going. Tips on dating in your 30s. Don't. Just don't. What's something you can tell your 10-year-old self? I would tell my 10-year-old self and my 30-year-old self, uh, don't be too hard on yourself. And I would say that the people who are making you feel like you're weird or you don't fit in, see something in you that you don't have the courage, that they don't have the courage to have or express. And I feel like if somebody told me that at 10 years old, I wouldn't believe them. But over time, I might believe them a lot faster than I did right now in my 30s. You feel any uncomfortable emotion when anyone wants a pic of your feet? No. I, I like my body's just an extension of my spirit and so like objectify away. I've kind of had to have this mentality since I've hit puberty and it just makes it easier for me to deal with but like but feet I I really don't I really don't care about the feet thing that's just like an anomaly to me but uh the same thing with like my entire body. I just it none of it makes me uncomfortable. Again, I don't react like people are going to do it in their head anyway, so like whatever. But offering free, like you want me to offer them for free, that I find offensive. Like at least say you're gonna pay me something for it. You know what I mean? A gift. There are these boots that I want. Feel free to offer them to send them to me and then maybe I'll send you a feet pic. I don't... Is it okay to feel like a teenager at times even though I'm in my 30s? Responsibilities aside, uh, duh. That's what I do on a daily basis. I feel, I don't feel any older in my 30s than I really did in my 20s. I actually feel, I don't wanna say I feel younger because like if I pull a muscle or I hurt myself or I injure myself, it hurts a lot more and for a lot longer than when you're in your teens or 20s. But mentally, I feel just as young and I like to do young stuff. It, I find it so funny that we give all of these like creative, fun, interesting things for kids to do. And the second that they turn 18, we tell them to like stop that and be serious. And you're like, well, wait a minute. What was all this for? A distraction? Yes. From real life? Yeah. But like, I think we all need to be doing more fun stuff. I think we should live in Never Never Land forever. When are you getting Fortnite? I just got Fortnite. Miss Rockdoll, go, go friend request me. I'm gonna learn some things. I'm probably gonna suck for a long time, but we are gonna learn it and I am excited about it. Tips on improving self-esteem and being nicer to yourself. Walking, like working out, go on your hot boy, hot girl, hot whatever walk, like getting physical strength, even if it's a little bit at a time, can definitely help improve your self-esteem. Working on communication skills. If you can be a good talker, you can probably be good in any situation. Being nicer to yourself, just tell yourself you're doing what you can. You're doing your best job. I did my best. I did my best. It's a Dane Cook line. And that's all you can do. And if you didn't get everything done that you wanted to for the day, or you're being slow on something, or you're procrastinating, and you just don't know how you can just sit down and focus and get to it, just be like, I didn't get it today. You will get it done tomorrow. Let's be honest, a lot of us, especially the ones with ADHD, are really actually good at meeting deadlines. We just wait till the last minute. Like, I'm great at turning stuff in. I just, I, I get myself to a point where I'm panicking about it and I get it done so fast that like, I don't need to give myself an, a, a panic attack. I've gotten really good though. Law school really it forced me to change my habits as it relates to 
organization and follow through and writing and all of this stuff that maybe I should talk about in a totally different episode. If today the world ended, what would you do? Would I still be here? Or do I have like a day and then the world ends? Knott's? Knott's Berry Farm? Definitely not Disneyland because Disneyland would be packed. You know the lines at Disneyland, if everybody knew the world was ending tomorrow, I wouldn't even want to see what that, what that would look like. But Knott's? Base jumping? Also, if you want life advice or have any questions or have any follow-up questions or want to send me suggestions, please send, e send an email to the Off My Meds pod that I will include here. Hey Jennifer, 24-year-old fan from Omaha, Nebraska. I only recently found out that I have ADHD. Your advice in the reintroduction episode about giving yourself grace on tough days really resonated with me. Aw, uh, I didn't even know that anybody watched that. I didn't think anybody was gonna watch that episode. That was... <clears throat> I'd love to hear more about your personal experiences and get some extra insights. Do you have any tips that have helped you with constant distractions and staying focused? Time management is a real struggle for me too. Really enjoying the podcast. Thanks, Matt H. Matt H, I actually think this is, I think this is gonna be a whole other episode. I think this one's a long kind of discussion because I want that to be the ADHD discussion. Are you a fan of combat sports? If so, do you have a favorite boxer or MMA fighter? Hmm, I do watch combat sports. I really haven't followed up a whole lot on UFC lately, mainly because I just, I actually liked UFC. So like I didn't watch it for like a year just because it was like I couldn't. And then I kind of fell off with the rankings and who was fighting. And so like, then it just became hard to care about who was fighting. Uh, Cause I didn't know anybody. And, s but uh, MMA fighter, who's an MMA fighter that I love. I did really like Shane Carwin. I don't know why his name came up in my head. He's definitely not, it's one of my favorites. I do like the heavyweights. Like I loved Rampage. Rampage was one of my, I like, I, not based off of, my favorite fighters are the ones that kind of have their own flair when they fight. I'm not so much like super big on high technicality, if that makes sense. Like the GSPs and all that, like the brilliant kind of jujitsu guys. Like, cause I just, I'm not, I don't know jujitsu. So I'm not somebody that's gonna be able to call out what, what's going on. I just, I like to watch men fight. It's fun. Uh, what was your first rap concert? I don't know what my first rap concert was. I bet you it was like Snoop Dogg though. First and last, I've seen that. I've seen Snoop so many times. Is Cypress Hill rap? Then it was probably Cypress Hill was my first. Yeah, Cypress Hill is rap, Cypress Hill. Least favorite concert. Honestly, I really like Atreyu. I just, I, Every time I saw him live, there's just something was off. I shoot myself in the foot for saying that one, but that one wasn't good. What is the last video game you played? Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which by the way, I have a Twitch account. If you want to come join me, I come on here randomly. I'm going to try to make it more often uh, when I have a schedule. I also have a Discord server now that someone was so nice to make me because I don't know shit about Discord servers and I'm, tr I'm, I'm figuring it out. But I have one, which is exciting. And I think I had more questions. We can make this a part three. These are fun for me. So uh, what? Oh, Fortnite, my Fortnite. We're gonna see how I do it that. I think that was all the questions. Woo, we actually did this. I'm, uh, my goal is to talk less, you know, and make some like shorter bite-sized content, but. Hopefully that answered some questions. Did I, I finished sentences, right? Like I, I didn't leave stuff unopened. I feel like there were a bunch of unopened answers that I gave. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys later.